General Ramaphosa reached a milestone 100 days in office. In the same weekend, his political party, the ANC, held its ordinary NEC meeting that was expected to announce a replacement for uh, the outgoing Northwest Premier, Supramahuma Bilu. That, of course, did not happen. But to look at these developments and what to expect in the new week, we now joined from a series in Pretoria by political analyst, uh, Professor Diniko Maluleke. Prof, good morning to you. Thank you so much for coming through. Good morning. Now, I saw one newspaper headline over the weekend basically uh, intimating that President Ramaphosa was bringing back the voters. Do you perhaps share the same sentiment? And uh, do you think South Africans are starting to heed the call of Tumamina? Well, there is no doubt that he has received very positive reviews. Uh, every uh, general survey that has been done that I've seen uh, seems to give him very high marks uh, indeed. So it looks like the Ramaphoria is, uh, is continuing, yeah. uh, especially because the things that he promised in the sauna, uh, he, he has been able to do many of them, not all of them, uh, but he has been able to do many of them and to start uh, some of them. And I think that's why... Um, he is receiving such positive reviews. Yeah, because that was actually my next question as to what is he doing right? You, you talk of some of the promises that he made during his State of the Nation address. I do know that the EFF leader, Julius Malema, is not impressed with the fact that the job summit has not happened so far. So what exactly is it that the president is doing right? Well, there are three main areas that I think uh, he has done very well in. Uh, first, it's the fight against corruption, which is uh, one of his main promises. He has done very well with that. Um, we have seen the work that has been done with the boards of the SOEs. Uh, we have seen the, the hawks uh, become active in a way we have never seen them uh, act before. Uh, we have seen the NPA... Um, uh, doing things uh, such as, um, uh, you know, fighting former President Zuma, something they've been very reluctant to do for a long time. And, um, uh, you know, uh, ESCOM, uh, DINEL, uh, PRASA, Transnet, uh, you know, we've seen changes. So as far mm -hmm. as corruption uh, fighting is concerned, I think he has done very well. I also think as far as um, the economy is concerned, I mean, he has appointed his envoys. Uh, he seems to have some, uh, some pretty clear ideas as to what needs to be done. And the markets seem to have responded positively uh, to him. But I think perhaps his greatest achievement is the fact that he has managed to change perceptions of the country and of government, especially of the presidency. I mean, there was a time when the presidency was seen as the factory that manufactures all the scandals that the country has. Mm -hmm. So in terms of changing perceptions, I think that's probably his greatest uh, achievement so far. All right. Now, let's just uh, shift our focus a little bit onto the ANC-NEC meeting that took place in Irene in Pretoria over the weekend. Uh, of course, we were expecting an announcement on the replacement of Supramahuma Bill. We've had reports that uh, three names have been put forward. The NEC is still considering that. What do you think is going to happen next? Will this be a difficult um, decision for the NEC to make in terms of who replaces Supramahuma Bill? More so because now the ANC is calling for unity within the party. Uh, it clearly is because by now we should know, and the fact that we don't know by now who is replacing Supra tells us that uh, intense uh, discussions are taking place and uh, that uh, perhaps uh, Supra Mahumapilu has not lost all his power after all. Uh, we are told that the PEC has put forward three names and um, if, if, if one uh, can make an assumption, if the, if the three names come from the PEC, there will prob probably be names that um, uh, would come from the Mahuma Pilu faction, if you like. Uh, and, and so I think that is the problem. Will the NEC be able to appoint someone who comes from outside of that uh, Mahuma Pilu faction, or will they have 
to make do with someone proposed by, by uh, the Mahoma Pilu faction? I think that's a crucial question. Uh, because if, um, if Mahoma Pilu continues to influence things, uh, he might as well have remained, and it might cause a lot of resentment. One understands that the president is careful not to alienate, uh, that the unity theme uh, must be carried forward, but at what cost? Yeah, yeah. Of course, with the reports, apparently some people within the NEC are calling for the disbandment of the PEC in that province. But what happens going forward, uh, uh, Professor Dinyuko Maluleke, within the ANC? I mean, you have uh, the conference that's set to take place in KwaZulu-Natal. You have the Eastern Cape, of course. There are still people who are worried with this Bundebel report that it was rejected by the ANC, nullifying the conference that took place last year. You have the Free State, the provincial conference took place last weekend, and there's a group of disgruntled members who who wants to want to go to courts to the courts again and once again to nullify this conference so w what does this do to the leadership of uh, president Cyril Ramaphosa in his capacity of course as the president of the ANC you know we have spoken about um, the things that he has done well over the past hundred uh, hundred days yeah but there are many things that he hasn't done well some of them were not even in his state of the nation address. So we can't just judge him, you know, against what he said. So we spoke about SOEs. Uh, we spoke about the economy. We spoke about perceptions. Um, but it seems to me that the provinces are a real problem area for the ANC as a party, but also for the government in terms of governance. I don't know what plan Ramaphosa has to deal with the problems in the provinces. I don't even know where to start, mm -hmm. which province to talk about. <laughs> uh, if you add to all these problems that you, you, you sort of touched on in the provinces, the recent um, uh, a, a, a Auditor General report uh, on, on, on local municipalities and provincial governments uh, year after year, we know that the provinces are as much a cause of corruption and state capture and, and local municipalities as the SOEs. And I haven't heard the president speak out clearly. I hear about interventions, I hear about investigations, but these seem ad hoc. They seem knee-jerk. I haven't heard of a system, All right. systematic plan to deal with problems at that level. So there are many, many problems okay. at, at that level, both party and government problems. All right, Prof, we've run out of time. We have to leave it at that, but thank you so much for coming through. Thank you. All right, many thanks to Professor Tiniko Maluleko, of course, talking to us live from our studios in Parliament. We're looking into the political development in our country, most of focusing on the African National Congress and President Cyril Ramaphosa's 100 days in office. We're taking a quick break.